Rob, thanks for meeting with me today. Thank you for bringing these issues to my attention. When I got your memo last week, I have to say I was quite shocked with some of the content, particularly around the cash flow situation, and I want to address the situation as soon as possible. Yes, agreed. I think the issues are related. Our lack of attention to our debtors and our timetable for purchasing inventory are both having a negative effect on cash flow, which has become quite extreme. Why do we have the existing setup with our suppliers? To purchase in bulk, but with no discount offered? I did try to find that out, but to date it seems the process is just something historical that has been in place for a long time. Most of our suppliers have gotten larger over the years and their minimum purchase requirements have changed for discounted orders. They've increased to the point where we are no longer eligible for any discounts on purchases. I believe we would have been in the past and this is possibly why our orders are still done, done in bulk now. How quickly can we start to source to new suppliers with more reasonable terms? Perhaps local ones too, where we can make smaller orders more often. That will help with the cash flow. Yeah, that's something we can look at and the time frame might be something we can change fairly quickly. In the short term, I'll let our current suppliers know we want to reduce the size of our orders suggest that we are looking elsewhere and remind them of our loyalty over the years and find a few leads to bring in some new suppliers. Leave that with me and I'll update you on how quickly we can make the changes. Now let's discuss the accounts receivable situation and our debtors position. I've printed an age receivables report for us to have a look at. Unfortunately, we do have a number of debtors in both 60 and 90 days at the moment something that should be addressed right away, particularly as most should be on payment terms of 30 days. How has this come about? We've had some staff changes recently and clearly the training has not been sufficient for them to understand how important the collections part is to the job in accounts receivable. Again, it is having an extremely negative impact on our cash flow and needs to be addressed as soon as possible. I've asked the manager and one of the AR clerks for a few hours this afternoon. We can use this report to follow up those outstanding amounts straight away, particularly those in 90 days and above where we can threaten to put a stop on their account without an immediate payment. We also have a number of customers that are also suppliers and we may be able to arrange a contra in this situation, again having an immediate effect. Let's also remind all our customers of their payment terms and get some processes in place to get it as flagged in the system to show the urgency related to the customers exceeding their payment terms. This is imperative in order to manage our cash flow effectively. At least this is an area we can work on right away and I'm sure we'll see some positive results. Now that just leaves the issue with the ATO regarding our ability to meet our commitments over the next month. Well I've been speaking with the ATO today and investigating on their website. We do have a number of options here. The most important thing that has come from my discussion is that all lodgements need to be up to date. The ATO has said we should lodge the monthly instalment activity statement with PAYG withholding and the BAS as per our normal schedule. We should then contact them as soon as possible before the due date and that they will work with us to find a solution. We can do that today. It's important to remember that it's our responsibility to meet our obligations, even if we use a tax agent. It's vital to lodge on time as this ensures that our information is up to date which provides us with the certainty of the amount we need to pay. It will show that we're aware of our obligations and doing our best to meet them. A penalty may apply if we fail to lodge on time, so even if we need extra support to pay, we should lodge on time or contact the ATO to discuss support options. If we're finding it hard to pay by the due date, apparently there are payment plans available we could use. They are generally for less than 12 months and require regular payments with direct debit preferred. We can also use the estimator online to find out how quickly we can pay off the tax debt. A general interest charge will still apply to any amount not paid by the due date. The estimator will also help us determine how much interest will be charged. Once we've worked out a suitable payment scenario based on our circumstances, we can use it as a guide to set up a payment plan via the online service for business. Large debts may require proof of capacity to repay. Well, I'm very pleased with what we've discussed today and we have plenty to move along with. I'm quite
quite relieved regarding the information from the ATO and we can certainly get the system in place right away. We need to be seen to be meeting our obligations. Thanks again Judy for all your assistance here. No problem, I'm happy to help. I'll get on to this straight away. I'll send you a copy of the minutes from our meeting today and we can go from there. That's great, thank you.